Nevada with Q102. And I'm Jason with Brown Derby. We got Memorial Day weekend right around the corner. Um, yeah. A lot of people going to uh, hit the lake or river, even though it could somewhat not be completely gorgeous out. Don't or know. it could be 102 degrees. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. You may even be going to Rocklahoma. You may Maybe. have been one of the lucky listeners from the uh, last episode. Mm -hmm. So. And that could either be rain, sleet, snow, or just scorching hot. Right. We'll have to see about that. Anyway, uh, we all know that I'm a wino. Yeah. Um, and so we've got. So we got something right up your alley. Wine in a can. So beer in a can. We talked to it ad nauseum on this show for the last several years. Oh, that was a really big word. Yes, I like the word ad. <laughs> uh, cocktails in a can, we've talked about that, perhaps not ad nauseum, but we have mentioned it. This time, we're going to blow your mind, wine in a can. Wine in a can. It's finally caught up, technology is here, the wine industry is embracing it, they've watched the can industry grow in both cocktails and beer, and they're like, okay, why aren't we, why yeah. aren't we doing this? So, uh, there's a lot of, I mean, in the last 12 months, we've gone from no skews to roughly five or six different brands and this is just the stuff that's regional for us there's a, a lot of other brands that are doing this nationwide depending on where you're watching this uh or, or uh, overseas maybe do we have listeners overseas like one okay like well, there one. you go so this is the funny part the romantic opening of the <laughs> can there you go Wow, that sexy kind of. That refreshing, refreshing slap of uh, <laughs> drink me, wine, drink me. <laughs> so, this is Chardonnay. I know you're a big Chardonnay girl from my years of hanging out with you. I'm a big wine girl. It's just, just in general. Yeah. So this is American Chardonnay. House wine actually was developed about 10 years ago, maybe longer, from Charles Smith out of Washington. Uh, you've seen these brands in stores everywhere, house wine, if you remember steakhouse, red wine, fish house, white wine, all part of the same, same group. So okay. this is, uh, a little bit apprehensive about this, but we shall see. Okay. You just, you swirl it. You swirl it just like you do normal. Every, I just, I feel like, I feel like that, like once you pop a can of wine, that yeah. like all that stuff is obsolete. It, like you don't have to do it anymore. That's a fair, that's a fair point and perhaps we will get to that because you're on the lake you're on the river and i'm not going to sit there in fact i'm probably not even going to have a wine glass with me oh you're so. just drinking it right out of the can i'm drinking it out of a can there's nothing wrong with that there's irony though i think i'm gonna I'm, like it's gonna happen with me because sometimes you're gonna shotgun it sometimes i just don't sometimes i just don't want beer yeah. Um, especially if like we're on like a two day float or sure. like a whatever, like I'll drink beer the day before and then the next day I'm like, I just want something a little bit more refreshing, yeah. crisp. A little lighter. And then yeah. I drink wine and get drunk again regardless. But This is, I mean, you can't, you can argue the vessel, you can say whether or not you want to drink wine out of the can. You can't argue that that's not good wine. There's nothing wrong with that Chardonnay. It tastes like wine. Yeah, it tastes like Chardonnay. <laughs> the only thing that you have to remember is... A six pack of beer versus a six pack of wine. This is like half a bottle. Twelve ounces is roughly half a bottle of wine. And it's roughly about twelve percent. So you're not gonna throw back a twelve So four cans is like how many bottles? Four cans would be two bottles. There's my limit. <laughs> four cans. So you're not gonna be like you may want to share them. Just saying. No. Be responsible. Uh, or be shadow. So, Four cans. Got four it. Cans. Uh, thanks for you know. Thanks for that because I don't know if I would have thought of. No, I, I've I, got my wine bottle limit. Yeah. But I don't know what my wine can limit right. is. So. So okay. Next opening. There you go. Sexy kind gonna, of. Gonna replace the old pop of the cork. So this is a red wine. This is not. This is actually Chilean. But it's from a Washington company. Hmm. Again, on the nose, nothing abnormal about it. It tastes like a red blend. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Imagine being around the campfire, you're grilling out. It's a little cooler now. You've transitioned from 
the white of the heat of the day to the red for the, the, okay. meat, the meat of the night. That's, That's what she says. <laughs> How to respond? I'm <laughs> trying to think of something witty, and I'm like, "Oh, you got me on that I one." Can't go there. So this is the next one's really cool. I'm I'm really pleased about this. So this is a, a group. Uh, it's actually represented by Gallo. If you're familiar with Gallo, they're probably the largest winemaker in the world. They make a thousand different brands of wine. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe not, give or take. So this is called. It's not a rosé. It's just leftover red. Oh, okay. I was like, why? Is they make a rosé. We've got it up here. But uh, this is called the Infinite Monkey Theorem. And this is a white wine. They're based out of Modesto, California. However, this brand and the thing says they are based in Denver and Austin, Texas. Denver, Colorado, and Austin, Texas. So I do not know if that's where the grapes are coming from. Uh, all I know is that when I drink it, it's quite good. At least their packaging tells you four cans equal eight glasses. I mean, it says it right there on the pack. So like. yeah, but these cans are a little smaller than the others. So it's that. It's about four cans equals uh, probably one and a half bottles. I was gonna say, are those glasses regular glasses or, or shadow, shadow glasses. glasses? Exactly. Who knows? Which tend to be pretty big. <laughs> you just mm -hmm. trough it off at the top. Yeah, just, pretty much. This last one, Barefoot, everybody knows Barefoot. I had to. She guilted me into opening this. Yeah. Uh, this is a spritzer, so it's going to be on the sweeter side. Mm -hmm. It'll have some bubbles to it. And this is their ripe berries and oranges flavor. Look at that. Just because it was Barefoot, that's why I made him crack it open. He wasn't, he was just gonna put it there for display and I was right. like, mm, mm I need to try that. So. My Walmart cooking wine. <laughs> if you're cooking with this, please. Brad used to yell at me about that too, back in the day. Nothing wrong with that. No, there's... I want to hate it. Like, that's refreshing yeah. and I could totally see that on the river. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. If it was 100 degrees out, and it might be. And if it's cold? That's good, too. That's yeah, this is warm. We're drinking it basically at room temperature. If that was chilled, 20 degrees, that'd be delightful. There's also Frico. Mm, that's really good, This actually. is Italian sparkling wine. It's Prosecco, essentially, but it's so champagne style. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there, there's literally anything you can do now is available in a can. Getting you ready for Lake Weekend or River Weekend or Rocklahoma or, or yeah. whatever. These are some winners, and uh, Barefoot, kudos. It's pretty tasty. Yeah. All right, um, stay tuned. There's a keyword coming your way in your chance to win with Q102 and Brown Derby. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Almost forgot.